video is long awaited and by far my most requested of any video ever. I made a video all about the color of my hair, how I keep it pink, what kind of dyes I use, all kinds of tips and tricks regarding pink hair. And in that video I said I was going to make a separate video for all of the kind of questions and tips I have about long hair, and about the length of my hair. If you're interested in learning about the color of my hair, click here. So this video is all about long hair, how to get long hair, and how to take care of long hair. I am not a hairstylist, I've never been to cosmetology school or anything, so everything that I'm saying in this video is just based on what has worked for me. If you're looking to jump to a specific part of the video, check out the description, wherein there will be a glossary of all topics covered. So, as you can see, I have really long hair. It's curly right now, but when it's straight, it's about, about butt length. It like goes to the middle of my tush, my tuchus. This is all grown out of my head. It's not extensions. It grew from my brain out. It's, it, it's, it's my, I grew it and then, and then this is what that is. A lot of people ask me if I use extensions. No, I am not. I don't wear extensions. I do sometimes use hair pieces if I'm doing like an updo or to add thickness to an updo or something like that because I don't really tease my hair. But this is all my own hair. However, do not confuse me saying that with uh, disliking extensions. I am 100% pro extensions. Extensions are awesome. There's nothing wrong with using extensions to achieve length. It's not cheating. When you're wearing extensions, if anyone asks you, is that all your own hair? You should say, yes, because you bought it. The reason I'm able to have this length of bleached hair is due to multiple factors. First of all, I'm blonde to begin with. It's crappy, but genetics do play a part in that. Since I'm already blonde, I only have to lift my color a little bit to get it where I want. You can, of course, have long hair with any color. I'm just talking about the relation to my bleached hair and my length. My hair type is actually really thin, um, but I have a lot of it, so it kind of gives the appearance of thickness. The other reason is that I take super good care of my hair. I have to because my hair is damaged as heck. Even if it doesn't look damaged to you, I'm telling you it's damaged because it's been bleached. Using chemicals on your hair will damage it. If you love dyeing your hair different hues but you're looking for a less damaging alternative, research into henna dyes. Henna dyes are much, much, much better for your hair than any boxed or commercial dye that you can buy. Unfortunately, you cannot lighten your hair with henna. The only way to do that is with actual chemicals. Ho hum. So what is it that affects our hair growth? Well, there's genetics, your hormone levels, your reactions to drugs that you may have to take that can relate to hair loss, your diet, other medical conditions, and how you take care of your hair. Of all of the things I listed, how you take care of your hair is the one that you are most likely to have control over, so it's the one that you can probably most easily change. The average person has about half an inch of growth per month. That's this much, which equals out to about six inches per year, like this. So you can see how long it would take someone to grow out their hair really long at that rate on average. If you frequently dye your hair, you're probably very familiar with your own growth rate because of those beautiful roots we all get. So right now, envision your ideal hair length. How long is it? Is it eight inches? 12 inches, 30 to 40 inches. You can start to see now the literal years it takes to achieve long hair. But if it's something that you want, you can make small changes in your life to easily achieve your goal. So as we all know, what we put into our bodies affects us in a huge way. Drinking lots of water is something that we all know we should do, including me, and I'm so bad at it. But it affects every part of your health, including your hair. So it's something that you should try to do a little more. Drink water, it's good for you. Omega-3 fatty acids are known to help with skin and nails as well as protein and vitamin D. Foods like salmon, avocado, walnuts, pumpkin seeds, mangoes, eggs, spinach, sweet potatoes. These are all good foods to incorporate into your life to help with uh, your hair growth. There are like loads of other foods with those elements as well, so it's worth looking into if you uh, 
want to make some changes in your life? <laughs> I feel like I'm trying to like indoctrinate you. Yeah, eat these foods. You'll love it. You'll love how you feel. If you are able to eat certain foods, which many of us are, uh, you can always try supplementing that in with vitamins. They sell all kinds of vitamins um, that are, you know, vitamin D and omega-3 fatty acids that you can take with food. That's pretty much the same thing as uh, eating those foods. There are also pills you can take that supposedly help with hair growth. Biotin is one that you've probably heard of before because it's the most popular hair growth uh, pill on the market. I have not used any pills personally, so I'm telling you right now that I can't recommend anything like that to you because I've, I've never tried it. If, if any of you have long hair, you'll know that it is, it is never enough. So even with my long hair, I'm like, I would like longer hair. So <laughs> I was looking into biotin at some point, but a lot of the research that I did said that um, if you're prone to breaking out, biotin will make you, you know, it'll be like pimple city. And um, I'm very prone to break out. So I was like, <laughs> maybe not for me. So I can't recommend any pills to you. Like I said, I've never tried them personally, so I don't really feel comfortable recommending that to you. But I'm, I can't not mention it because so many people swear by stuff like that. You may have heard before that shampoo is bad for your hair. And it's true! Shampoo is really bad for your hair. If you want long hair, you're gonna have to get in the habit of not washing your hair every day. If you wash your hair every day and you find that your hair gets super oily super quickly, that's probably why. It's because you're washing your hair every day. It's a really difficult cycle because you're washing your hair to get rid of the oil in your hair and then your scalp's like, hey, where's all the oil? We should hyper-produce oil because there's not enough oil and then your hair gets oily really quickly and you're like, ah, I have to wash my hair, it looks so oily. <laughs> you can start weaning yourself out of this vicious cycle. Try washing your hair every other day and then after a couple weeks, every third day. It's gonna be not fun for the first little bit, but if you want long hair, it's something that can make a huge difference for you. So buy a shower cap and invest in some dry shampoo as well. I wash my hair two to three times a week and dry shampoo is my savior on the oilier days. You just shake the can really well, then spray onto your roots, then rub it in a little bit with your fingers to get all of the powder evenly distributed, and then just brush through your hair like you normally would. Here is a hot tip for dry shampoo. Try using it the night before instead of in the morning when you're getting ready. It'll look way more natural and less powdery. Also, dry shampoo will add tons of volume to your hair without you having to tease it. So two birds with one stone. Speaking of that, don't tease your hair. Don't tease your hair. Don't tease your hair. Teasing your hair is so bad for it. Oh my gosh. Now listen, I know, I know. Some styles that you wanna do, you just need to tease it. Like I get it, I get it. I'm not gonna tell you what to do. I'm not your mom. I'm not your real mom anyway. But if you can avoid it, don't do it, don't do it. Teasing is so bad for your hair because you're brushing against the grain of your hair and like just janking up the shaft and increasing your split ends and just, it's so bad for you, don't do it. So when you are washing your hair, only apply shampoo to your roots. The rest of your hair will get washed with the runoff of the shampoo. Unless of course, you fell in a mud puddle and soaked your head in dirt. Because hey, we've all been there. Many other people that I've talked to have reported success with completely removing shampoo from their daily routine. You can use shampoo substitutes or even at-home remedies like baking soda to wash and apple cider vinegar to rinse. Some people even wash their hair using conditioner. A lot of curly haired girls have told me they do that and that they like it a lot. There's a lot of information online, so if you're interested in ditching shampoo, you should definitely look into that. When you are conditioning your hair, you should be focusing on the bottom two thirds of your hair. Any conditioner higher up than that can contribute to less volume once your hair dries, so just focus on the bottom two thirds of your hair. If you find that your hair is thin or damaged or breaks easily, like mine, do not brush your hair when it's wet. Your hair is more elastic when it's wet and will break much more easily. With the length I'm at, I don't even think about brushing my hair when it's wet. It will only end in tears and tears. Do you get it? It's funny because they're spelt the same. You know what, forget it, it's fine. Certain brushing techniques are very important. If you've never had long hair before, you may not be familiar with it. So, let's review. Always start with the bottom of your hair and work up. Not like this, don't just start right here. No, no, start 
gently at the bottom and as the hair becomes detangled, work your way up. It's also important to consider the kind of brush you may be using. A lot of people like the ones with the little balls at the end of the bristles because it, it feels nice against your scalp, but those ones aren't really actually the best. Those little balls on the end of the bristles can also rip through knots as well instead of like brushing them through. Wide tooth combs are awesome, and personally I also really like the um, Tangled Tamer or Tangled Teaser, depending on if you live in the US or um, Canada. This is not me being weird, okay? There's like a Sally's brand knockoff, it doesn't matter. Those kinds I really like, I'd show you mine, but I actually broke it two days ago. How are you sleeping at night? No, I don't mean your constant grappling with the magnitude of the universe. I mean, how is your hair sleeping at night? If you're letting your hair go all wild willy-nilly, you might be inviting damage. <gasps> Especially if you move around a lot at night. Try gently braiding your hair at night before you go to sleep and um, also getting a pillowcase that's either satin or a really high count cotton. Satin pillowcases are also really great if you like to set your hairstyle at night so that it's ready for the next morning because the satin is a lot less likely to mess up your hair. This is the part that a lot of people will struggle with the most, including me, which is removing all heat tools from your life. But Ange, how can I do that? Hey, hey, don't be mad at me. I'm only telling you what you already know. Blow dryers, hair straighteners, hair curlers, hot rollers, every type of heat element hair styling tool is bad for your hair because heat damages your hair. It's just a fact. They absolutely, inarguably contribute to breakage of your hair. So, if you want super healthy long hair, you probably should remove heat tools from your life. Now, I'm not gonna judge you if you use heat tools. I sometimes use heat tools. It's kind of unavoidable, especially if you have long hair, because like, no one wants to go outside with wet hair. Like, I get it. I'm not judging you. I do it too. But I'm just saying we should all work a little harder to try and remove heat tools from our life because they're not good for us. There are lots of ways to style your hair that don't require any heat, like pin curls and curl formers and braids and all kinds of stuff. I'm planning on doing some videos about those, so when they exist, They'll be right here. Be sure to get regular haircuts. Haircuts are essential for removing split ends, which will only travel further up, up the strand shaft and it'll just be gross and damaged and ah, it's bad for your hair. Split ends are evil, bad. I totally understand if you're feeling like, ah, I don't wanna go to the hairdresser because I've been working so hard to grow my hair out and they're just gonna cut it off because that's a fear that I have. So be sure to communicate your very best to your hairdresser that you're not getting a style, you just want to trim just, just a little bit, you know, just removing the bare minimum, you're trying to grow your hair out. It's a scary thing for us long hair lovers to get our hair cut, but it is a necessary evil. Split ends are the devil. They're really bad. A lot of times you'll see products that are like, guaranteed to repair split ends. That's a lie. Split ends cannot be repaired. They have to be cut off. Those products, all they do is like surround and coat the split end in silicone, but just like anything else, it's gonna wash right out in the wash. Your split end isn't healed. That kind of magic does not exist on this earth yet. If you are a swimmer, you probably already know how bad chlorine is for your hair. But if you are not, I'm telling you right now that chlorine is really bad for your hair. Personally, I don't dunk my head uh, in pools or hot tubs for this reason. Because chlorine is really bad for your hair. Especially if you've already damaged hair like I do. However, swimming is a very wonderful thing to do. So if you like to swim, consider getting a swim cap. Bring whatever hair cleanser you use, whether it's shampoo or whatever, to the pool with you and wash the chlorine out as soon as you get the chance. Because if it stays in your hair, it's just gonna be bad. Now I'm going to introduce you to your new best friend. Coconut oil. I love you coconut oil. You're so pretty and helpful. Mwah. Coconut oil is super 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 good for your hair. It doesn't matter what brand you get so you could get this one but it doesn't matter. The things that matter are that it's extra virgin coconut oil and that it's cold pressed. I used to only be able to find this stuff at health food stores and now they seem to carry it at like all kinds of regular grocery stores so you'll probably be able to find it really easily. Personally, I always apply coconut oil to the bottom third of my hair. Uh, you can just do the tips, whatever you want, but I always 
apply lots of it a couple hours before I'm planning to have um, a shower and wash my hair. It conditions my hair, it protects my hair. I'm telling you, once you start using it, you'll be like, I love you coconut oil. Coconut oil is the best, and Ange was right. Obviously, there is a lot of information in this video, and making all of these changes to your life at once would be a really big deal, so I don't really recommend that. I would recommend that you take some little pointers and try to incorporate things into your life one at a time and see how that helps you and how it can benefit you. I hope that all of the information in this video will be super helpful to you guys, and, and I wish you the best of luck in your, in your long hair journey. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye! Ding. Oh, I don't have to do the ding, because I can just add that in. Okay, here we go.